This lesson is on TAR, GZIP, and BZIP compression utilities. Now, with GZIP, the GZIP utility is as follows. This will allow you to compress and decompress files. So let's go ahead and first, before we get into that, let's create a file in our home directory. We'll create, let's do touch test file.txt. You'll see that we have the file there. So now, let's say we wanted to compress this file. We would just do gzip space testfile.txt. Now if you look, you'll see that you no longer have testfile.txt, you now have testfile.txt.gz, gzip. And if we wanted to uncompress the file, we would just use gunzip testfile. And you'll see that you no longer have the compressed file, you now have testfile.txt back. But let's say we wanted to compress it, yet store the same file, keep the original file, just compress it as a new file. We could just do gzip-c, and then space the file name, and then we're going to use our redirect, and we're going to redirect to, let's just do new test file dot we'll do txt dot gz and then you'll see that you now have the test file dot txt and the new test file dot txt dot gz now let's say we wanted to check the status of a file in gzip let's do gzip space dash l and we'll do on the new test file and you'll see it compressed 33, uncompressed 0 the ratio is 0.0% .0 .0 .0 and this is the compressed file, new underscore test file dot txt so you see this gives you a little bit of information on that zip file let's go ahead and unzip that file again And you'll see that now we have two files, new testfile.txt and testfile.txt. Let's look at, uh, let's go ahead and open up the man pages for gzip. And we'll be able to see more flags, the, more, the other options available by just going through here. You'll see that the dash C that we used wrote the output of the files to the standard output on the screen and then we used our redirect to redirect to a new file we have dash d which will actually decompress so instead of using instead of using g unzip you could actually use gzip dash d let's go ahead and exit that and let's go ahead and just zip up one of these files these files gzip let's do new test file and test file now let's talk about the bzip utility. Now the bzip, just like uh, gzip, has similar commands. Instead of gzip, you would just use bzip2, followed by the file name that you want to zip up. So let's go ahead and see what files we have here. Let's unzip. Let's unzip the new test file. Unzip. Or actually, let's do gzip dash d for decompress, and we're going to do that. And now you'll see that we now have our new file, our new test file uncompressed. And now let's zip it up using the bzip utility. So on larger files, bzip tends to outperform gzip. So let's go ahead and do bzip to new test file. And you'll now see that we have a the new test file dot txt dot bz2. Now we can also uncompress it by just doing b unzip2, followed by the zip file name. And you'll see that we now unzip the file from the bzip compression. There are also various other flags that you could use with bzip. Um, we can check them from bzip2 dash dash help and you'll see that it gives you a list of flags. 
So you can do it in verbose mode. You can print out the contents to STD out, and so on. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the tar utility and how tar can work with gzip and bzip. So first, before we work with tar, we need to know a little bit about the different flags. So let's go ahead and tar dash dash help. Actually, let's pipe that over to the ls command, and we'll be able to scroll through. All right, so you'll see that the main ones that we're going to be working with are c dash c, which create a new file archive. We're going to be using v. Let's go down. So I'll show you. which give you verbose list files process and we would be using the dash f which you set the file for the archive so let's start with those so first to compress a file let's say we have our new test file.txt we would just go ahead and do tar space dash cvf and then we're going to do the file name that we want to create because the file name we want to create goes after the F flag. So we'll do tar file dot tar and followed by the file that you want to that you want to compress. You'll see that now it let us know which file got compressed using the verbose mode. And it, we should have a new compressed file. Tar file dot tar. Now you'll notice that it didn't remove the exi the original file, it just created a new file. Now if we wanted to unzip it, we would just do tar space dash xvf. And this would uncompress the file. Tar file dot tar. And you'll see that now you have your new test file dot txt removed, but yet the tar file still exists. So let's go ahead and just remove the new test file.txt. Yeah. And let's try that again. Tar xvf, tar file. And we should have the file right back. Tar is also a good way to make some backups if you use it with the comp various compression utilities. Alright, so now let's say we wanted to use tar to create a gzip version of a tar. So let's list what we have here in the files. So let's say we wanted to create a gzip tar of our new test file.txt. Well, to create a tar, we would do tar space dash cvf, the file name. Let's do tar file 2 dot tar, followed by the file you want to tar up. Now, the only difference for gzip, you would add z. And just so we have a, just so everybody else knows you don't have to actually do this you can just do dot gz that way everybody who any system administrator that comes after you would know that that's a tar gzip file so we'd run that and you'll see that now we have a tar file dot tar dot gz compressed file now to uncompress it well to uncompress a tar we would just do tar dash xvf followed by the tar file 2targz The only thing we'd have to make difference here is add the Z flag and we'd be able to decompress the file. Now if you wanted to create a bzip version of a tar document, we could also do that. So to zip a file using the tar utility, we would just do tar-cvf space the file name that you want to create, tar file 3.tar bz2 let's say followed by the file name new and for the flags the only difference is that we would add the j option and now we press enter you'll see that it printed out the files in verbose mode we'll do ls and you'll see that we now have a bzip2 tar document and to untar that, we would just do tar, just like xvf, but we would add the j option, 
followed by the file name. Char file three, and this would go ahead and uncompress that file.